Welcome, everybody. My name is Alex Lubarski. I'm the uh, founder of Health Media Group. I've been in and around healthcare for over uh, 25 years and um, over 15 in this particular human optimization uh, concept. And I've gotten involved with it first as a hobby and then uh, because I saw and I was diagnosed with my own very chronic, very annoying health issue that um, the healthcare system that we've been sold and are spending $4 trillion a year on is not supportive of addressing the underlying cause, primarily because it profits on the indefinite management of our chronic disease. So what I'd like to offer you is a little bit of a different perspective. And our goal here uh, is not to sell you anything, not to convince you of anything, not to change your mind about anything, our goal, our sole goal here is to show you the matrix. I don't know if you guys remember that movie, but the matrix was that place where there were a lot of these pods and the system has learned how to suck the energy from those pods and live off of it. So those of us who can recognize and see the matrix um, will act accordingly. And then if you feel you're one of those people that wants to get out, then I'm going to introduce you to some really amazingly powerful people that will help you with that process. So on today's program, I'm going to introduce you to uh, first Dr. Danielle Roberts. Uh, then I'll introduce you to Jose Grulon and Alana. And then I'll introduce you to our keynote speaker, Dr. Jimmy Kilimitzaglu, who is a biomimetic dentist. Uh, I'm going to be giving away a copy of this book at, uh, later in the program. It's The Obesity Code by Dr. Jason Fung. Uh, there are over 10,000 five-star reviews on Amazon, probably closer to 15,000 now. And this book is uh, revolutionary and transformational. One of the major contributing factors to a lot of the chronic illness that we are faced with in our society is being overweight and, and obese. If we can address that one fundamental thing, we can probably cut the uh, chronic condition, chronic diseases in half in our nation. So um, I'm going to be giving away a couple of copies tonight um, to the best questions. The most excellent of questions will get that book. So our first speaker graduated from Binghamton University, cum laude, with a degree in psychology, uh, no, psychobiology. She went on to complete a dual degree in osteopathic medicine and clinical nutrition in 2008. Our guests have studied many modalities, including trigger point injections, functional medicine, including certifications in chelation, IV therapies, acupuncture, essential oil, immunotherapy, Tai Chi, Tai Yoga, massage, energetics, and she became a level two Reiki practitioner. Our guest is a board certified family practice doctor and has served our communities as a physician, medical doctor, hospitalist, and co-developer of a revolutionary new awareness system that teaches people step-by-step step how to create disease, how to create a disease-free body so they can function at the very peak level of health expression. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Danielle Roberts. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Now I'm unmuted. <laughs> thank you so much, Alex. Um, thank you so much for that kind introduction. Um, and thank you for bringing us all together here to be able to do this today. Um, and hello to everybody. Welcome everybody here. I see I can uh, see a whole bunch of the participants here. It's a little bit unconventional. I'm used to being able to interacting back, interact back and forth, but we'll make it as interactive as, as we can. Um, you know, definitely write your questions and we'll get as many of those answered as possible. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you guys here. Okay. So, um, so yes, as Alex was saying, I mean, I think one of the biggest um, issues in our medical society today is that we have a, a sick care system instead of a well care system. And we typically uh, address the effects of the diseases instead of the causes of the diseases. So, um, 
so today we're going to give you, as Alex mentioned, a little peek into the matrix and see if we can give you a different perspective. So how many of you think that your body's, the fate of your body's well-being is really um, based on your genetics? That basically, you know, your mom and your dad had specific diseases or a specific longevity traits. And because of their longevity and their disease patterns, you are, are basically bound to that fate. Yeah. Um, and how many of you have a sense that that's not really true? You know, there's a, there's a mix, maybe the environment, the, the things that we eat, the things that we do influence whether or not we're going to get sick or not. Well, so whatever, whatever you guys have just have answered, basically, you know, I, it is what we've come to find is that if you have two parents that live to be 80 years old, that that adds about three years to your life. However, if you have, if you change your environmental inputs, you detoxify your body, you eat well, you figure out a way to manage your stress through meditation, then you can add up to 30 to 50 years of uh, years of life to your life and also add quality to those years. So that is, that is quite significant, you know, a three year difference versus a 30 to 50 year difference. So, um, so basically we're gonna, we're gonna show you here today, I hope, um, how you can basically optimize your body so that you can get as many years out of your life as possible and as, as much life in those years as possible. Um, but first, I'm just going to share a little bit, bit with you guys about me and why I'm here, why I feel so passionate about sharing these things with you guys and what my, my journey has been like. So, um, so here are typical pictures of me as a kid, um, kind of hanging upside down, just kind of being crazy and silly. As you can see on the left, I'm at the, the absolute pinnacle of the playground there. My parents probably with their heart in their throats, but I was always hanging from some tree or climbing on something. Uh, thank you, mom and dad for, <laughs> for allowing me the freedom to soar so high and, <laughs> and keeping it together somehow. I appreciate it. Um, you know, and there behind me on the on the right hand side, my dad built houses. So that was the that was the second house we lived in. He was he was building that house next door while we lived in a much smaller house. And uh, so I was always on some construction site or those types of things. And, um, you know, my parents were excellent. We came from we came some, from some very humble beginnings. You know, my dad built houses. My mom was a waitress. And, um, you know, they did everything that they possibly could within their power to give, uh, give me the best shot at, at having the best life I possibly could. You know, as Alex mentioned, I did gymnastics and, um, you know, they took me to gymnastics five nights a week and, I, and then to competitions on weekends for nine years. So they were incredible. And, um, you know, but, you know, like every family, we had our, we had our own struggles and, um, you know, our family was not a stranger to, to addiction. Um, and it was difficult to watch those struggles go on, go on in the family. And, uh, you know, it wasn't before long that I also, um, I also wound up having my own struggles uh, with food compulsion and with addictive behaviors as well. So, um, you know, I learned, uh, I learned, I think as most children do that, you know, there are, there are ways to, there are ways to be loved and there are ways that you should be in order to be loved. And I figured out ways that I thought I needed to be so that I could get those things. Um, you know, so the two biggest things I, I chose was to be a perfectionist. And if that doesn't work, then, you know, food often was a big comfort for me. So, um, you know, so I, after gymnastics was over, I gained, uh, I was on crutches for a year because I had, I had chronic ankle injuries. And at that point, I really struggled to find my way. Um, and that was, that was kind of at the peak point where food became, became a bit of a crutch. And, um, though I was achieving, I was, you know, an honors student, I was still, you know, competing, uh, I was still doing sports in high school and things like that. It became, it became a, a little bit more difficult, um, to just in general inside I was struggling. So, you know, about 19 years old or so I had gone to the doctor and, um, over a short period of time, 
time I had, uh, I had chronic abdominal pain before I started, before I started uh, any of the eating issues, I actually had abdominal pain for many years. I was hospitalized as a child at five years old for constipation actually, and abdominal pain. And, um, and we didn't know why then, but later on it was compounded by, by the behaviors that I was choosing. And, um, I wound up, you know, by 19, went to see a GI doctor. I had, uh, you know, abdominal pain, constipation, cramping. I had a uh, hiatal hernia. I had reflux. I had, had um, a fungal infection that started on my skin and kind of spread uh, spread all over all over my skin, and um, and at that point, uh, you know, I, it was a bit of a wake up call, and I I had um, you know I had a moment of clarity, and I think at that point, instead of I, I recognized that. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't bulimic. I wasn't this this label that doctors give to a constellation of symptoms that they that they have determined is now this disease that I have or that I am. Um, I realized that I was choosing a behavior, um, and that be, if I was choosing that behavior, I could stop that behavior. And at that point, um, there was a bit of a turning point and, and I was able to start to move towards taking control of my life again. Um, I was able to overcome the food compulsion and I was able to find ways to heal my body. Um, typically the conventional medical route uh, had offered you know, acid blockers and certain things to, that they recommended for, um, for the problems that that would that had presented themselves but um instead i figured out ways to reduce the hiatal hernia there were ways to treat the h pylori naturally there were ways to be able to treat the candida the candidal overgrowth and heal my gut lining and the inflammation my skin went down a whole bunch of a whole bunch of things uh turned around and um and that was you know kind of the beginning of me really being able to um to understand that it's it's important for us to take responsibility for our health and find a way to help our bodies to thrive. So, um, you know, that's my life since then has essentially been dedicated to to exactly that, to learning exactly how my body works, to figuring out how to eat well, um, how to use my mind, how to how to support myself with positive emotions. And now I am 39 years old and probably in the best shape of my life. So. Um, I hope that all of the work that I've done to figure out how the body works and, um, and be able to find all these kind of secrets and tidbits myself uh, is able to give you guys a bit of the wisdom that I've gleaned and, um, and help you guys get there faster. So why am I telling you all of this? I mean, I think the biggest, the biggest part of uh, the reason I'm telling you all of this is because it's really important that we understand that 95, 99.5% of all disease is caused, or diseases that we cause. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, you know, if your parents genetically, if you have good genes or high, uh, high longevity, then maybe you add three years to your life. But the choices that we make on a regular basis can add 30 to 50 years to our life and add a significant quality to our life. So 99.5% of the diseases that we see today, through my experience, and also, you know, Deepak Chopra talks about this as, as well, um, I believe are caused by preventable, uh, preventable behaviors and actions that we choose ourselves and essentially our environment. Um, so once I realized that I caused this and I owned that, I was able to uncause it and I was able to find a way to wellness. So in order to do that, one of the first things, um, one of the first things I started to do was figure out exactly how the body works. So I'm going to share a little bit with you about that and, and then um, how we can help to optimize, optimize your health and wellness um, as to a much higher level. So these are cells. <laughs> These are the smallest fundamental units of life, which is just amazing in itself. These are microscopic, amazing little units of life. 
And in order to sustain that life, you know, inside those little cells, those microscopic cells, there's these little tiny organelles. There's a, you know, you don't need to know any of this, but there's a nucleus, there's DNA, there's, you know, mitochondria that create energy, all of these different things, cell membrane. And in order to keep that cell alive, do you guys know what it takes to be able to sustain the life of a cell? What does a cell need in order to thrive or stay alive? You guys can just write in your little in your little bar there and let us know what you think uh, what you think it takes for a cell to stay alive. Do you have any guesses? See if I can figure out how to how to see if you're writing to me here. Here we go. Is nobody writing to me? You guys don't know. <laughs> Come on, any guesses? What do you think? What do you think cells uh, cells need in order to survive? Daniel, you got to scroll on the bottom of the screen. And uh -huh. you get you have a bunch of people answering. Oh, oh, I see it on the on this this here. Let me see if this is it. Let me see more chat. Let me see if that's it. Ah, there we go. Okay, chocolate. Oh my god, that's amazing. I definitely definitely cells need chocolate. <laughs> that's great. Um, nutrients, oxygen, energy. Um, so cells have to make energy, but they need nutrients in order to do so. So they need water, they need nutrients, they need food, right? So specifically, you're, they're going to need oxygen, they're going to need water, they're going to need carbohydrates, they're going to need proteins, they're going to need fats, they're going to need vitamins, and they're going to need minerals, okay? So seven things that they're going to need in order to survive. Pretty simple. And those are the smallest units of life on the planet. So whatever it takes one cell to survive, it takes every cell to survive. So if it's a liver cell, a bone cell, a brain cell, cells all need the same thing in order to be able to thrive and survive. And guess what? Those cells become tissues. So whether it's skin tissue, brain tissue, cardiac tissue, those cells multiply and then become uh, tissue systems, which then become organs. And then those organs become organ systems like our digestive system all the way from the mouth, all the way down to our stomach, intestines and out through our anus. And then lastly, those organ systems come together, multiple organ systems to create our bodies. And just like I said, whatever that one cell needs to survive, each and every part of our body, every organ system, every organ is made up of these cells. So our body is just this amazing collection of tiny little cells that work together to be able to keep us alive. So what is, what is deficiency? What do you guys think now that we've mastered this whole question and answer thing, or at least you guys have, let's see if I can do it again. <laughs> okay. What do you, uh, yeah. What is deficiency? Okay. So it's when the cells are lacking something, right. Okay. If you have a low vitamin D level, anything else, any other thoughts about what deficiency is? A lack of something. Yeah, exactly. So basically there, we named those seven ingredients, those seven building blocks that cells need to be able to, to survive and thrive. And if they don't have any of those things, they're deficient in one of those things. And what do you think happens if those cells become deficient? What happens to the cells if they don't have the nutrients they need to survive? Yeah, they shrivel up and die, they atrophy, they're not able to make that energy that you mentioned before, they don't work quite, quite right, they malfunction, they degenerate. These are great answers, awesome. Yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. So um, I'm getting better at figuring out how to work all this webinar stuff here, okay. Um, 
So let's just look at one. Let's just look at vitamin D. There are, a, there are a bunch of different vitamins and minerals that the body needs in order, that each cell needs in order to survive well. But if we just look at vitamin D alone, let's look at this. If you do your blood levels for vitamin D and there are less than 10 nanograms per milliliter, you're severely deficient and you're at risk of a disease called rickets, which is a, which is a bone disease, which causes very weak and brittle bones where you can have many different fractures. Um, but you know, if we, if the, what I have highlighted here, if you're less than 20 nanograms per milli, milliliter, which I see, I've seen in patients over and over and over again, this is extremely common to have a, a level, uh, at this, at this deficiency level, 75% greater risk of colon cancer, 75%. That's incredible. Now, if you're just deficient and not severely deficient, there's an increased calcium loss from your bones causing osteoporosis. And we know very well as you age and in the elderly populations, slips and falls and fractures can sometimes be the beginning of the end. And it's very difficult sometimes in the elderly to recover if you're not able to walk and recover your muscle mass. So increased bone breaks, osteoporosis, poor wound healing, increased muscle pain, increased joint and back pain, greater risk of depression, increased risk of diabetes, schizophrenia, migraines, autoimmune diseases, allergy, um, increased allergies, preeclampsia, increased inflammation, okay? So now if you're just suboptimal, if you look at the 30 to 50 nanograms per milliliter, uh, there's twice the risk of heart attacks, an increased risk of high blood pressure, and three times the risk of multiple sclerosis. Anybody want any of these things? You guys want these? Should we like, you wanna sign up for any of these? No, no, right? We don't want these things, <laughs> no. <laughs> and it's so simple, it's so simple. It's just making sure you have enough vitamin D. So optimal levels. If you're anywhere between 50 and 80 nanograms per, per milliliter, you're in an optimal vitamin D level. And here you have a 50% reduction in breast cancer, decreased risk of all solid cancers, and you slow the risk of cancer growth uh, if you already have cancer, you slow the risk of cancer growth in, in patients that already have uh, an existing cancer. So that's a pretty significant effect. Uh, it's a pretty, a pretty significant um, consequence to having a deficiency. And that's just one vitamin. That's just vitamin D. There are multiple other vitamins and minerals that have significant effects on the body as well. Whereas if we have the chance to optimize these things and figure out what our deficiencies are, imagine the diseases that we can prevent and the quality of life that we would be able to enjoy for that much longer. So just quickly, I'm not gonna go through each vitamin and each mineral, but you know, just so you guys get a sense of how many other ones there are, there's vitamin E and there's a bunch of other functions that vitamin E carries out. Uh, if you're deficient, you do have muscle weakness, which I, you know, I know a big part of what people were interested in in this talk was learning about you know, um, unexpected weight gain uh, or autoimmune diseases and things like that. So a lot of the nutrients that I'll scroll through really quickly here, um, they govern immune function which if you don't have them can lead to, uh, you know, decreased immune system, more infections, chronic infections, but also autoimmune diseases. And, um, and some of them will, you know, support metabolic processes. So if you don't have them, your metabolism would slow down, your muscles might get weak, you might lose muscle mass. If you lose muscle mass, guess what? If the more muscle mass you have, the higher your metabolism is. So if you start to lose muscle mass, you're more likely to gain weight as well. So calcium, again, um, very, very similar. I'm not gonna go through each one of these because we have limited time. Um, chromium here, very important in carbohydrate and fat metabolism, uh, assist in insulin function and if deficiencies cause metabolic syndrome. So obesity, overweight, uh, unexplained weight gain. Um, magnesium, similarly regulates a whole bunch of other nutrients and can be a big cause in chronic fatigue, which I know is something that people are really looking at as well. Zinc. Um, there we go. Uh, N-acetylcysteine or glutathione. These are major anti 
antioxidants that the body produces. And if we don't have those, we have increased muscle fatigue, decreased detoxification, which I'm going to get into in a second, and decreased toxin elimination. So if you're not eliminating toxins, that is another reason why you could have unexpected weight gain. And I'll explain that in a second. Okay. So if you don't have the proper nutrients, right? Now, we already, you know, we went over this a little bit, but it's so clearly if we don't have the proper nutrients and we're deficient, what's going to happen to your cells? And you guys already said that, right? They, they shrivel up, they don't work, they malfunction, all of these types of things, which means the organ systems don't work well. So everything from um, your cells working well in your mouth to your, you know, your immune system working well in your mouth, making sure you don't get dental infections, making sure that you're di starting to digest your food well and chew your food well, because that's where nutrient absorption starts, right? It starts in the mouth where enzymes are released. And then that passes through into the stomach, into the gut and all the way through the body. And if those cells are malfunctioning, then they're going to have a lot harder harder time absorbing nutrients and feeding the rest of your body and the rest of the cells what they need. So we won't go into the whole, you know, how do they occur and, you know, and how do we, how do we fix that? That's, I have a whole course on that, but, um, but suffice it to say, if you're deficient, all of these effects happen and it's not necessary. It's just not necessary. And our medical system is not addressing these things. So that's deficiency. Now, what about toxicity? What do you guys think toxicity is? Come on. What you got? What do you think toxicity is? <laughs> parasites. Parasites can add to toxicity. Yeah. Um, poisoning or overload, poison, too much of something. Yeah. Actually, you can become water toxic. You know, water, we're going to have Jose here talking about water in a second, but if you drank too much water, you could actually become uh, overloaded with water and it's actually toxic to your cells. So it's anything that's basically out of balance where the cells become overloaded and then they would, uh, they would essentially, again, start to malfunction. They would start to die. They would not function correctly. Okay. So Again, all these little organelles in the cell need proper balance of nutrients and need waste removal. So if those wastes start to build up, then you have toxicity in these tiny little organs, the mitochondria that make your energy or in the DNA that transcribe um, all your genes and they're gonna start to malfunction. You can wind up with cancer, autoimmune diseases, a whole bunch of different things. So now let's just look again, there's a bunch of toxins we can go over and there's so many different things that uh, can contribute to our body building up um, a burden of toxins. But let's just look at mercury. Let's just look at one toxin and the effects of that. So, um, so typically we, we get exposed to mercury, whether it's in the fish we eat, uh, fish is a, a big place that we can get exposed, the dental amalgams in, in the mouth. A lot of people are not aware that those fillings are actually, uh, actually contain mercury and I mean, of course, you know, we, you know, the saliva, the enzymes in your mouth, imagine that that mercury can constantly kind of be leaching into your system if you do have mercury amalgams. Um, vaccinations, uh, they, you know, I believe they've started to take some of the mercury out of some of the vaccinations, but here you're basically going right past the skin barrier and injecting um, a toxin directly into your body, into the bloodstream, past any other filtering mechanisms. You know, at least your digestive system has a bit of a filtering mechanism to push waste out, but this is, you know, a direct injection of that. Um, earlier paints, so if you have older houses that you've lived in or things that you might be exposed to that way. They all contain mercury and coal burning power plants. So there's a bunch of places we can be exposed. Um, now, we're not going to go over all these, but this is the heavy metal toxicity scale that I use with my patients. And these are some of the symptoms that you can have if you are toxic with mercury or heavy metals. And these are things, again, that conventional medicine is typically not addressing. So unexplained irritability. How many of you have, how many of you have unexplained irritability? <laughs> right? I do. Um, constant or very frequent periods of depression. Numbness or tingling of your extremities. 
And this is typically a numbness and tingling that moves. It doesn't stay in one place. It would be different from a herniation, like a, a vertebral herniation or a back herniation. Um, frequent urination at night, unexplained chronic fatigue, cold hands and feet in moderate weather. Now, these are things typically you go to your, your physician in the convention, in conventional medicine and they kind of say like, ah, it's normal. Oh, it's not a big deal. It's in your head. You know, they don't have a formula for this in conventional medicine yet. Um, poor memory, brain fog, sudden, sudden unexplained anger, <laughs> constipation, difficulty making decisions, tremors um, or shaking of your hands and feet, muscle twitches, leg cramps, ringing in the ears, uh, getting out of breath easily, heartburn, excessive itching, metallic taste in your mouth, um, suicidal thoughts, insomnia. Um, you know, these are these are very difficult constellation of symptoms and they make people miserable. And oftentimes they've been chasing uh, some answer for years. I just, you know, Alex and I just met a woman this week who's been searching for three years and, you know, we think we can help her pretty quickly, um, which is such a privilege. So, um, you know, and, and then there's autoimmunity. Um, so in general, this mercury will decrease your immune system's fun ability to protect itself, which is kind of ironic when we're using vaccines to try to help protect us from infections because they do decrease the ability of our immune system to support itself. They reduce the production of uh, IL-1 and TNF-alpha. You guys don't need to know these, but these are parts of your immune system. Um, they increase the apoptosis or cell death of monocytes and lymphocytes, which are two immune system cells. Um, and they decrease the ability of the immune system to fight candida in the gut, which, you know, which is something a lot of people experience and, and prevent them from being able to absorb their nutrients. So this can lead to increased autoimmune diseases and a whole bunch of other things. So again, mercury is just one toxin. And imagine if we could um, we could assess if our body was overburdened with mercury and upregulate our five detox organs, which I won't go over now. Again, I have a different course for that, but we have essentially five detox, detox organs and we can upregulate or optimize the function of those five organs, as well as identify the toxicity and help to clean our bodies out. And imagine what that could do. Uh, you know, imagine what that could do to our health and wellness. Um, so that was just mercury. And again, there are a bunch of other types of toxins. There's neurotoxins, there's pesticides and herbicides, PCBs, diesel fuels, um, gosh, just to name a few. <laughs> but we live in a world where we have a lot more toxicity than we used to. And we need ways to be able to support our body to be able to let go of them and function well. So. Um, I won't go into how to do that, but there, you know, obviously we can teach you that in the future as well. Um, so if you start to become overloaded with toxins, where do you think your body stores them? What do you guys think? What do you think your body does with them? Any idea? You know, you want to know the five detox organs, right? I'm not going to tell you. Not yet. <laughs> Fat the liver fat, the liver and the other organs, right? The liver tries to process them, right? And if the liver can't process them and you become overloaded, yeah, they'll, it can be, it can be, you know, you'll, you, we can measure heavy metals in our hair. They sometimes are eliminated in our hair. They're stored in our bones. And you know, if they, the body's smart. It doesn't want to store it in the organs because the organs will start to malfunction. So it will start to store it in your adipose tissue or your fat tissue. And again, leading to possibly this unexplained weight gain. Okay, so what if we could optimize our bodies? What if we could identify these deficiencies and help you guys supplement them? And what if we could identify the toxicities and clean house and, and basically help your cells, each of those beautiful, beautiful little cells to become optimal and work together? Um, guess what? We can. So, you know, the reason Alex brought us here is because, you know, again, conventional medicine isn't doing this. It's not looking at the cause of what is causing our cells to malfunction at the root. Um, it is, it's, it's focused a bit more on the effects. So we can look at the root cause and we can start to give ourselves what they need in order to be able to survive. 
So I'm gonna give you one more tidbit because not only can we do that, but we can do one step better. And you know, how many of you, so we wanna, we wanna add those 30 to 50 years of life and quality of life to our, to our existence here. But I want those three years back too, right? Those genetics, like if you had, your parents had good genetics and you have those three extra years of life, who wants those three years? <laughs> I'll take them, right? I'll take them. So what if we could also start to manipulate, um, start to, uh, to influence our genetics and it, which genes are uh, expressed and not expressed and not just live with whatever genes we got. And guess what? We can. So this was a, this was an amazing study. There's a whole field of epigenetics and nutrigenomics that look at this and look at how nutrients, thoughts, emotions, and external environmental signals turn on or turn off different genes in our body, or express or unexpress certain genes in our body, just like a computer. So if you're working on your computer and you have certain apps open and those apps are all kind of functioning, um, you can also close those apps and those apps are no longer running on your computer. Maybe your computer speeds up, but you're essentially no longer using those apps. And that's exactly what they found with these, with these mice. So the, the mouse here on the left, we'll call her Gertrude here. She was, she's a big yellow obese um, mouse and she's predisposed to uh, diabetes, cancer, cardiovascular disease. Now they, they fed her a diet of meth that was rich in methyl groups. Don't need to know what that is, but B12, folate, um, betaine, choline, these types of things. And those nutrients do exactly what it, it is to shut down those apps. It closes down the DNA so it can't be read and that gene is not expressed. So they fed her that diet and guess what? Her kids, her little pup next to her, that's her kid. That's not a different species. That's her child. And this mouse is brown, it's lean, has lean muscle mass and is not predisposed to any of those diseases. And that is just one generation. And we can do it in our own life, in this lifetime, with our, if we decide to change our own diet, we can send these same signals to every single cell in our body and decide and determine which, which diseases are gonna be expressed and which ones aren't. So are you guys, is that like not so exciting? Does that not, I mean, how amazing that we have this technology now to be able to do this for ourselves. So to drive it all home, basically our inputs or our choices, whether it's our foods, our thoughts, our emotions, our toxicity levels, drastically modify our DNA or the expression of that DNA and therefore our destiny. And we now have all the tools we could possibly need to be the masters of our fate and not the victims of our genes. So, um, I just wanna thank Alex for bringing us all together here. And if you guys wanna take the first step on being able to figure out how to optimize your body, definitely stick around and Alex can, uh, he has got a 12 question questionnaire that can help you guys take the next step to figuring out how to optimize your body. Thank you so much, Dr. Roberts. You are very um, welcome. We're going to have a, a 12 question, 12 question um, assessment form that I'm going to make available. Uh, you guys can schedule a 45 minute consultation uh, with myself and Dr. Roberts. And we're going to spend time uh, really trying to help you, whether you do anything from that point or not, uh, get to the root cause of whatever is ailing you. So, um, Our next speaker, ladies and gentlemen, uh, works in tandem with his partner, and uh, they are the most passionate people about water in the United States of America. And I have to tell you that it's so crucially important that you take this into consideration because water is what you're made of. Like 80% of your body is water, and you want to make sure that that water is pristine. So um, Jose and Elena has been uh, yeah, doing this for a long time. He brings a lot of love and passion to the, to the project. And uh, he's just one of the best people I know, just a really good hearted guy who wants to make a difference for people. Uh, so my great pleasure to introduce to you, 
Jose and Yelena. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Thank you, Alex. Dr. Danielle, it was a great presentation. Thank you so much. We actually learned a few things, actually, believe it or not. <laughs> That's great. Um, yeah, so thank you very much, Alex, for having us. Uh, as you know, Yelena here, my, you know, my partner, uh, she's very good at what she does. She loves what she does. And that's why we're still here together doing, you know, what we love for our clients. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about water and a little bit about air, right? So as usual, we're going to interchange and I'm going to start off. So now, Alex, you don't mind if I just share my screen for a second? That'll be awesome. Thank you so much. Let's see which is the one I think is this guy right here. Okay. So as you know, the body is composed of roughly or mostly water. Uh, on average is about between 50, 70%, depending on your age, your, you know, your location on earth and the planet and uh, your size of the body and so forth. Um, so I'm gonna just read off a few things that may alarm you uh, from recent studies with regards to a new contaminant that has been emerging lately in the news, uh, but it's, it has been there for decades and probably centuries. It's just that nobody listens until somebody screams. Um, so basically it's PFAS that we're gonna be talking about. PFAS is, is a specific type of, of categories of contaminants found in the water. And it comes from different forms. It comes from clothing, from firefighting foams, from uh, Teflon in general, like the, you know, the, the nonstick pots and pans that we have. Um, so all that eventually goes into our cesspools because we flush it because we, you know, we, cleanse, we clean with it or through the uh, water waste uh, management you know, process or go, going through the, 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 the dirt, you know, the, the, the sand and, and um, the gravel and everything from you know, the backyards and the, and, and the, the, the lawn, uh, so from the lawn. And basically all that essentially, when it rains, it seeps down into our aquifers. So like Long Island, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, they all have, we all have groundwater, meaning that we have aquifers in the ground very far down and they drill these heavy duty pipes to pump water out like a well water, right? And that's how they actually distribute the water throughout the communities. Where in New York City, for example, in Brooklyn, in some places also in Queens, New York, uh, the water comes from a river instead of the ground. It comes from the Catskills from up, you know, upstate. Um, so it's not as dirty, but though they actually infest it with a lot of stuff, <laughs> they inject a lot of things that we don't like to, you know, to know about. Like for example, um, fluoride is one of them. Uh, the fact that the pipes are so old. Uh, so you have also lead coming out in many pipes because they can't remove it. Uh, it's you know, forever there until something big happens and then you have to stop the whole city basically to remove some pipes from the, from the roads. Um, so in recent study, and I'm gonna just read this off again. I, I don't wanna talk too much about it. Just wanna read it off. So you see that this is coming from a legit source. And at the end, I'm gonna give you the link so that you can go yourself and read upon it. Um, so there's a study by Harvard University um, found that elevated levels of PFAS in COVID-19 patients may increase the risk of severe COVID-19 in their likelihood to be admitted to intensive care units or die. And PFAS concentrate is vari in various organs, tissues, and cells of the body and can cause immunotoxic immunotoxicity, testicular and kidney cancer, liver damage, decreased fertility, thyroid disease, and pregnancy risks, among other ad adverse health effects, which builds up in the lungs where COVID-19 commonly attacks. PFAS have uh, water and grease resistant properties and are used in nonstick cookware, as we mentioned before, waterproof clothing, food packaging, and firefighting foams. More research is needed to determine the effect of the elevated exposure to the environmental, you know, uh, uh, basically in the environment in general, but also uh, for, for um, poor COVID-19 outcomes. 
PFAS have been found in the blood of over 98% of Americans and also has been found in both tap and bottled water. Because as you know, bottled water is just basically tap. They just slap a, a label on it and they make sure they maybe adjust it a little bit to make it taste better and so forth, remove chlorine, some other taste and odor. And as long as it's under EPA levels, just like the tap water, it's okay to sell it. Uh, the whole house systems were also wildly viable in, in some cases where actually increased PFAS levels in water. And you know why? Because most people just buy the cheap stuff because they buy the stuff from China, they buy the stuff that is unspecial, they buy the stuff that is only a few fractions of the cost of the actual real systems. And, um, and that's what they get. So, you know, you don't smell it, you don't taste it. But eventually, if you test your, your blood, you may find out that a little surprise is there. So our recommendations is drinking and cooking with water purification systems. And the Water Quality Association calls it the final barrier, which means that whatever it's done at the water plant, whatever they do, it's okay because they're doing the best they can. But by the time that it comes to your house, you must make sure that it's completely safe because it's not really safe, right? So you have to take that syringe wrap, for example, because they put it on at the water district before the water leaves their building because it goes through these, you know, these pipes, right? These old pipes. So that's why they add all these chemicals so that they don't kill people right away. But in the long term, if you don't do it, you know, if you drink a lot of water, you want to make sure it's, it's very clean water, such as my partner says, pristine. <laughs> <laughs> in purified solutions, that's the abbreviation PS, in purified solutions, we call it a final product. And the final product basically is, this is a whole house configuration. And you see the red line in here. That's basically where the water comes in. We call it raw water. We bypass any irrigation. It goes through a whole house system that actually can reduce PFAS very effectively. And also then the, the dark blue line here, basically now you have filtered water, conditioned water, water that is good enough for you know, your skin, your hair, breathing, the, the gases that actually are removed you know, from the water because like chlorine, for example, is a gas. And then protecting all the plumbing appliances, you don't see toilets and you know with rings in the toilet. Um, you can reduce perhaps uh, watermarks and so forth, especially in your in your bathrooms. You know, um, and then the light blue area here is where the purifier goes. So what some people say, well, I just want to put something in the whole house and I can drink from everywhere. Not necessarily, because it's not removing everything. The water has to go through it so quickly. There's not enough contact time. So if you put a specific media filtration media to remove a specific category or contact or contaminant, sorry, then it only does the job for that and maybe little things for other ones. But when it comes to drinking, to ingesting, you want to make sure it's as pristine as what she says as possible, right? So we want to go further, deeper into removing things many times over. And when it comes to many times over, it's about 50 times better, right? So at the whole house level, you get good water, but at the point of use level, you get very good water, excellent water. Pristine. Pristine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so basically these are some of the systems that we carry. We have on um, most of them lifetime warranty and the whole house systems by the manufacturer, by the way. Um, they're certified to remove many contaminants and we have different types for different types of, of water conditions. And also, you know, depending on the person's budget and also what they really want to have as an outcome, um, you know, there are many options. So this is just a handful. We have over 100 products from a small 20 inch filter for a whole house all the way to a whole house reverse osmosis commercial grade. And for a point of use, meaning the one that goes in the kitchen usually or an office for, the, for that matter, we have this guy here. The Micromax 7000, this has a 10 year warranty by the manufacturer. And actually, it was tested by the North Carolina State University to remove PFAS by 81%. That was in 19, I'm sorry, what am I saying? In 2014. Um, this one here on the lower left is the Spirit by Blue Water. It's a very high end machine that removes it by 
we actually test ourselves, but we send the lab and then the results to another lab. So we want to make sure that things work before we sell it, because otherwise, you know, it's like, why, why are we doing this? You know, I, we're, you know, we don't want to be thinking that we're helping people. We're not. We want to make sure it does. So for those two, for sure, we know they're tested already and they're certified. OK, so now we're going to leave it to my partner, Yelena, to speak for a few minutes about air. Yes, of course, and it's very essential right now with the air we breathe, the viruses, bacteria, and in our five-stage medical grade air purification and surface disinfecting filtration system that we are um, advertising. It has the following features. It's a NASA-based proprietary technology, and it's proven to inactivate over 99 to 97% of highly concentrated airborne source for two wires and in enclosed settings in just three minutes. In addition, better than half our filtration and proprietary patented technologies, this system also includes the following technologies. And ion generation to ensure particles are removed while the carbon layer prefilter absorbs odors and gases. Photocatalytic oxidation technology, a very powerful air purification technology that destroys microbes, volatile organic and chemically active compounds. Ultraviolet light, a germicidal lamp along with our proprietary technology, which destroys over 99% of contaminants in the air and on the surfaces, effectively purifying the entire space. Eliminates common irritants of allergies and asthma. Removes smokes and odors without ozone. Whisper silent operation and purifies up to 2,000 square, square feet. In a nutshell, it reduces bacteria, mold, fungi, and viruses, including COVID-19, and has been tested in, in the labs. Our proprietary technology is the only certified space technology in the world. Our systems are currently used in medical facilities, businesses, schools, nursing homes, professional sports facilities, and many other facilities where air quality is a concern. This would be our number one recommendation to you in creating a breathe with ease environment during any virus season or pandemic for this matter. And this is the systems that we recommend for the whole house purification um, and for portable that also kill up to 3,000 square feet of uh, purified systems. Very good. So that's basically our presentation for today. The references you see in the lower right-hand corner here, if you want to write it down, because we made it so easy so you can remember if you have to or take a snapshot on your screen. You can go there and you can read the uh, the two articles regarding PFAS in the water. Um, and as Yelena stated here in the back, I'll, I'll bring it back again for a second. But you know, the system in the, in the middle on top, that's for the whole house that goes into the HVAC system. The one on the left is a smaller one that's portable. And that basically has this specific technology that, that removes COVID in terms of surfaces by sanitizing surfaces. The one on the right has a combination of, of both basically. So it is a better than HEPA filter. It also has the UV and the technology that also uh, kills or sanitizes that say um, surfaces up to 2000 square feet. So back in here again, thank you very much. If you have any questions, concerns, that's the phone number here at Long Island, our local number, one of us will answer. And if we don't answer, we can get back to you right away. So that's basically at info at purifiedsolutions.net or our phone number is 631-482-7792. Thank you. Thank you. OK, excellent. Um, <clears throat> thank you for that, Jose. It was good job. Jose installed the filter in my house. He uh, did the one uh, in Jimmy's office. Uh, he's our main man, and we uh, we trust him implicitly, and that's why we're very proud to introduce him to you here. Uh, our next speaker uh, graduated from the State University of New York School of Dental Medicine at Stony Brook in 2002. He is the Associate Clinical Faculty in Sunny Stony Brook School of Dental Medicine. He's a retired major in the Air National Guard, Air Force, member of the 106th Medical Rescue Wing at West Hampton Beach, uh, past president of the Suffolk County Dental Society. Our guest before he became a fabulous dentist was a chef for seven years. 
Uh, more recently, he founded the ESI Healthy Dentistry in Smithtown, New York. It is uh, my great pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Jimmy Kilimanjaglo. Yay! Thank you for that great introduction. Let me just share my screen so everybody can, can see. All right, so this, this is great because uh, uh, Alex, Danielle, Elena, and Jose basically framed everything, so we're, we're ready to go. Um, a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about, you guys uh, are primed already because of our wonderful speakers. So we're going to basically look at it through a dental prism, uh, but we're sticking with the same theme, total body health and um, optimization. So a lot of times people will come to me and they'll say, no matter what I do, I always have problems. Why me? You know, my, my teeth are soft. Uh, my mom had bad teeth. My father had bad teeth or bad gums. And I'm just going to inherit them. Um, and like uh, Dr. Roberts said, you know, we're not stuck with these genes. Uh, some genes are good. Some genes are bad. But we can actually do something to, to uh, change uh, our genetics. And, and it has to do with environment and lifestyle. So we're going to talk about it um, today. <clears throat> so... Uh, the mouth is attached to the whole body, so it's not like a separate entity. Um, like you heard earlier, it's where digestion begins, and, and it's definitely a portal to other systems of our bodies. Um, so inflammation uh, is definitely one thing that we see in the mouth. Uh, we see that a lot. Uh, we see an a imbalance in the microbiome, where instead of it being a nice, perfectly balanced uh, ecosystem, you have certain things that are uh, predominant and other things that are not really thriving. So it's not exactly what you want. It's not the environment that uh, is optimal for your health. So other things that we can see is acidity level, as you can see here, uh, the integrity and the health of your bone, uh, your immune function, uh, cardiovascular health, brain health and digestion. So we're gonna touch up on all those things today because uh, we know that the mouth is the portal to your digestive system, but did you know that it's a portal to your uh, lymphatic system? your immune system? Uh, how about your respiratory system? I mean, a lot of times you take deep breaths from your, from your mouth, right? So it's part of your airway. Um, sleep apnea is a major issue right now. And it's because your tongue kind of falls back and you have uh, uh, a lot of thick muscles around your, your airway, your neck, and uh, you can't really get properly um, oxygenated at night. So you end up waking up without even realizing it about 130 times during the night. Um, so it's a portal to the circulatory system. If you look at gums, what color are they? Pink, red, right? Why is that? It's because we have so many capillaries and, and little blood vessels. Uh, anything that's in the mouth can literally get access to your uh, circulatory system. And speaking of circulatory system, it can go to the brain. So if you have uh, nasty bacteria in your mouth, it can go to the rest of the body. So when you're looking at dental problems and, and we can diagnose things, these are some of the problems that we see on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, caries is a fancy name for cavities, right? Or, or um, rotting teeth. Uh, metal toxicity, we heard about earlier, um, like mercury toxicity. Bruxism or, or grinding of your teeth. A lot of times people say, oh, I have TMJ, uh, temporomandibular joint or uh, tempor temporomandibular disorders, whether they're skeletal, right? Uh, like bone to bone or muscular or sometimes it, it, it's stress related, right? Psychologically, you have hyperfunction of these muscles and you can uh, grind your teeth or, or chip teeth, um, fractures, right? Erosion is another phenomenon that we see here in this picture uh, where you have stomach acid. Uh, we heard about bulimia earlier. Uh, so the stomach acid goes through the, the mouth as, as you're regurgitating. And now only these surfaces are eroded, not the outside. Sometimes you'll see the opposite. If uh, somebody is uh, sucking on something acidic like lemons, you'll see um, <clears throat> the erosion pattern on the outside of the tooth. So I love playing detective and figuring out uh, what's going on here. So is this phobia here? Um, is it uh, methamphetamine use? Is it stress related? Why is this person grinding? Is it because they're stressed, they're stressed out or is it because they do have sleep apnea and they're trying to grind towards the front just to get their lower jaw forward so the tongue goes forward so you can open up your airway. Um, so mercury toxicity, interestingly enough, we heard some sources, right? Fish being one of them. Uh, uh, a recent study shows that the uh, highest source of mercury 
in humans is dental amalgam fillings, mercury fillings. Uh, shocking, right? Because uh, you wouldn't think that. Uh, but it's definitely, definitely true, and it's uh, from a reliable source and then multiple uh, literature reviews. Uh, galvanism is another phenomenon. I'm not going to spend too much talking about that, but it's kind of like a battery in your mouth. When you have two separate metals, unlike metals, and you have a medium like saliva, you have little, little shocks, right? Uh, and then those little shocks can actually transfer to your muscles of chewing. We call them muscles of mastication. And then they can have neurological problems like brain fog and, and things like that. <clears throat> A more common thing is periodontitis or periodontal disease, as more, more commonly um, referred to. It's basically gum disease that eventually can become bone disease, where you have uh, melting away of the bone that surrounds your teeth. And what happens when you don't have good bone around your teeth? They become loose, because that's basically the structure, uh, the structural support of our, of our teeth. Yes, uh, bad breath is another one. Missing teeth is another uh, commonly thing that I see. Uh, we heard about candidiasis, which is a fungal infection. Dry mouth is a, another very, very common thing. And, and we have to figure out why is there dry mouth? Is it because um, your saliva is not properly uh, being formed by your glands? Is it because you're taking certain medications or, or you're having toxicity or, or deficiency like we heard about earlier? Uh, oral cancer is something that I, I'm very passionate about. I wanna make sure I detect things and I'm very, very picky um, about that. And you'll hear a little bit more about that in a few seconds. Uh, misalignment of teeth, you may think that that's not a big deal, but if the teeth are not properly aligned, you can't chew properly, uh, you're having debris, food particles, and toxins in between certain teeth, and uh, as the teeth are coming together, not just for today, tomorrow, next year, but a lifetime, they actually chip, they, they force teeth to move around, so teeth constantly are shifting around if they're not properly aligned. But let's focus a little bit about autoimmune diseases. Because uh, a lot of you, uh, as you signed up, you wrote down that you want to hear a little bit more about that. Well, <clears throat> I'm not going to spend too much time talking about what it is, because you all know what it is. It's a basically kind of like civil war among your, your immune cells, right? Your, your white blood cells, uh, your immunoglobulins, right? And you, your immune system is kind of turning against itself, and it's creating collateral damage. Because our immune system is, is designed so it can identify an intruder, so to speak, and then figure out, learn how to fight that intruder, okay? Um, but now you're creating specific cells that are going to damage your own cells. We call them autobodies, autoantibodies. So those are immune cells that are targeting your own tissue. And there's a genetic predisposition to that. Let's face it, some people are just pre-programmed to have autoimmune diseases. And there's a, um, a test that you can do, if there's a familial history, uh, it just runs in, in the uh, family, so to speak. But there's also another huge, huge component, which is your, is your environment, right? I'm not stuck with these genes that I inherited from mommy and daddy. Uh, what is my environment? What, how's my lifestyle come into play, right? Because some people are exposed to some environmental and nutritional triggers, and now they're turning on that disease. So what I'm alluding to is if we can identify that and figure out what are these triggers, we can stop them from turning on this disease, right? So... Uh, oral infections, for example, those can trigger autoimmune diseases, as you see here, uh, myocarditis or, or skin rashes, uh, you know, you have lupus, you have diabetes, Crohn's disease, which is a GI uh, condition, lichen planus, which I see a lot here on Long Island on, on the inside of your mouth, Chauvin's syndrome, where your glands are not working properly, whether it's sweat glands or tear ducts, um, saliva, so everything's all dried up, right? <clears throat> so, we do have genetics and we have these triggers. So basically you have DNA mutations, right? That are predisposing somebody to these diseases, but they cannot express themselves unless you have an environmental trigger. Without that trigger, it stays sleeping and it's never expressed. In essence, you're kind of curing that disease before it even uh, shows up. So it's important to know what's your familial history, right? If uh, diabetes runs in the family, let's make sure we do things to prevent that from happening in the future, to prevent that from uh, uh, turning on. So tooth decay is another oral infection. Yes, tooth decay is an infection. Uh, it's caused by a bacteria, right? Now, um, you hear about strep throat where you have streptococcus that infect the uh, pharynx, and the treatment for that could be uh, using an antibiotic. And I'm not suggesting that you use antibiotics to cure um, rotting teeth or, or cavities. Uh, but I do want you to think about it as a mouth infection. Think of it as a strep mouth, right? So, but instead of using medicine 
you can actually re reverse it. And I'll tell you a little bit about that in a little bit. <clears throat> so gum infections are other uh, oral infections and they are the ones that cause periodontal disease. You have a genetic predisposition, right? And there's also the environment. What are you eating? Uh, how's your oral hygiene? Uh, what is your lifestyle? Um, and it's caused by aggressive anaerobic bacteria, bacteria that don't like oxygen. So what do they do? They hide in these little nooks and crannies, crevices in your tongue or cheeks, um, the lining of your gums around the teeth where they hug the tooth, right? So now you have poor oral hygiene and it's a vicious cycle. Uh, you're causing inflammation, inflammation that enters the rest of the body. Um, I recently saw a patient after we treated him, um, we treated him, we took out some bad teeth, we did a non-surgical uh, gum treatment for him, and uh, he came in today for me to see how he's doing. I was amazed at his healing capacity, and he basically said to me, I feel great. I don't know how you did it, but you're, you're amazing. I'm not amazing, but it's basically the treatment that I was able to render for him, which is basic treatment, it wasn't anything very, very sophisticated, but he felt better. He told me that you know he has more energy. Why? Because we had this nagging, annoying, chronic type of infection, inflammation that he was carrying with him all the time. Now we've got rid of it and he's healthy again. So he is more sharp, he's got more energy, he feels great, he's, he's, uh, he's got a better attitude, right? He's more energetic and enthusiastic. So um, again, I'm harping on the fact that the mouth is attached to the rest of the body and, um, and vice versa. So there are effects that go from the mouth to the rest of the body and from the rest of the body to the mouth. Uh, so let's keep going. When we're focusing in the mouth, right? We know that there's a predisposition to disease, but what happens is we're kind of training with this inflammation, we're training the body to be immune biased, right? You're, you're, it's, it's inflammatory bias. So now your immune system is so hyper, hyperactive. It's like, oh my God, there's inflammation, there's inflammation. So we're training it for inflammation and you have progressive tissue breakdown. Um, your body's going haywire and it's kind of like destroying your own tissues, collagen, um, bone, cartilage, right? So now this is a bigger problem because your tissue repair capacity is lower. So let's pick on uh, diabetes, for example, because diabetes and periodontal disease, gum disease are, are linked, directly linked. So you have gum disease, gum tissues, right? Your, your lining of your mouth, you're constantly being bombarded by bacteria. And you have these pro-inflammatory substances, we call mediators or cytokines, right? So you're producing insulin resistance, which basically is what diabetes is, right? And now you're triggering diabetes. So you have this gum infection that makes you three times more likely to have diabetes. And then now you can't control your blood glucose, right? Your, your A1C is too high and it makes it harder for you to fight infections in the mouth, which makes your gum disease worse and it keeps on going in a circle, right? Uh, <clears throat> this is a very shocking statistic. One out of four diabetics have perio, right? They have gum disease and they have poor blood glucose control, which makes your gum disease worse. Your gum disease makes it harder for you to keep uh, your blood glucose under control. And now you have diabetic complications like you see here poor wound healing. I have to be very, very careful with my diabetic patients because uh, I have to be vigilant and proactive so they don't develop infections. Um, they have problems tasting food. They don't have enough saliva. Um, as you, you don't have enough saliva, you don't break down your food properly, right? Um, Dr. Roberts mentioned that we have a lot of enzymes in our saliva that start the digestive process. So now you're not really digestive, digesting things properly. You know, one of you wanted to know about weight gain and how the oral cavity has a lot to do with it. Well, this is it, right? If you don't have proper saliva, if you don't take good care of your mouth, if you don't have an optimum oral biome, that's where it starts. And you're not taking, taking advantage. You might be taking supplements, but it's almost as if you're not even taking the supplements because you can't absorb, right? Uh, so <clears throat> you, these patients may be more prone to cavities or inflamed gums. And eventually they have tooth loss, right? It's not just teeth, it's heart, right? Cardiovascular disease, coronary artery disease. Uh, neuropathy or neuropathy is for your nerves. Nephropathy is for your kidneys. Uh, even the liver, which is not even over here. Uh, they're notorious for having eye problems and um, uh, TIAs, trans ischemic attacks, like little mini strokes. So, okay, so we know that uh, this thing wreaks havoc in the mouth, but what happens for the rest of the mouth, right? Because I, 
like Danielle was mentioning, I want to put you on a, a kind of like a dental diet and, and tell you what nutrients can help you, right? Oh, Dr. K, I want implants. Well, slow down. Let's prepare your body. Let's enhance your immune response so that when I do place the implants, you won't have any complications. We ensure the success rate. So if, if my success rate is 95%, hey, let's make it 99%, right? Um, so I will tell you to take some, some uh, supplements, let's say calcium or vitamin D or vitamin K2, uh, but if you don't have proper digestion and proper absorption of these nutrients, you're not going to be able to enhance your ability in your oral optimization, such as strengthening your bones, strengthening your gums, uh, enhancing the collagen that's in your ligaments around your teeth, and having oral um, biome balance. So how do we identify these things? How do we diagnose these things? Well, you can't, if you can't see it, you can't treat it and you can't diagnose it. So uh, digital radiography, those are digital x-rays, um, which I think is wonderful, but it's not the whole story, is it? Uh, we have intraoral cameras where you can actually take pictures of, of uh, the teeth and you can uh, show patients so they can see what's going on in their own mouth. Uh, we have transillumination, which is basically this special camera that has a light, it's a visible light, floods the tooth with light and they can take a, a video or a picture of it. So here you have this molar here that has a tiny cavity that you cannot even see on an enhanced digital x-ray. Uh, so you're putting it all together with all these advanced diagnostics, right? Uh, I spoke to you about oral cancer. Yeah, visibly you look for certain things that are suspicious, but sometimes you'll see something and it won't really look like much, but when you look uh, with this bell scope, which is uh, um, this fluorescence unit, this the fluorescence tool that we have, it actually can show us what's underlying underneath. You can take a photograph of it, compare it. Maybe you can do a brush biopsy where you take a special brush and you scrape some cells. You uh, smear it on a glass slide, send it to the lab, and they look at it under a microscope, take photographs of it, send it back with a report, and they say, good news, it's just a little callus, uh, probably from irritation. Or if it is something suspicious, we can treat it and cure it. How cool would it be for you to catch something early and, and cure cancer? I think that's fascinating. And I've been blessed to be able to do that for some of my patients. Um, there is something called a three-dimensional CBCT, which is basically, uh, think of it as a dental scan. Instead of a CAT scan, it's like a dental scan for the mouth, the jaws. Uh, it, it's, uh, instead of it being like a laser precision slice, 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 like a medical CT, which needs a lot of radiation. It's like a fan, almost like a big floodlight, like a flashlight that goes around your head, takes about 15 seconds, but it gives me a lot, a lot of detail. Because a lot of times patients will tell me, oh, I heard root canals are bad, they cause cancer, um, it's a dead tooth, um, nobody can really do a good root canal. Not entirely true, because if you look at a two-dimensional x-ray, this looks like a straight line, doesn't it? But if you take a look at six different uh, teeth, cross sections of six different teeth, you'll see six different configurations. Uh, and in, that, in order for you to three-dimensionally clean that system, you need to be able to see it, identify it, and then use something advanced, right? Like uh, a three-dimensional cleaning, so to speak, a, a three-dimensional cleansing, whether it's ultrasonics or a, a laser, photoacoustic energy, we do have the ability to do that. So today's treatment that we can provide in, in the office here is not your grandfather's root canal, right? where they basically go in there with like a, a hand file, like a hand little wire brush to kind of scrape and say, yeah, I think it's all done. And you actually didn't get everything out. So a lot of times people will say, I have this tooth, it's constantly nagging me. I had a, a root canal and a crown and it's always bothering me. Well, with this three dimensional scan, I can figure out where is it? Is it on the outside? Is it on the inside? Is it in the middle of the root or the tip of the root? And now we can look at it together and do co-diagnosis work together as a team and figure out what's the best treatment for that particular tooth. I love using high, high tech stuff, but I also like high touch, right? Meaning it's not all about uh, fancy toys like diagnostic lasers. It's also something like low tech, like salivary analysis. What is your resting saliva? You're able to produce saliva, right? That's very low tech. Uh, what about the pH? Why are you developing all these cavities? Is it an acid? Um, imbalance where your pH is too acidic and you're not able to buffer. So there's a lot of different simple things that we can do to figure out the culprit of why you're having certain issues, like bad breath, for example. Maybe it's lack of saliva. Maybe it's because you have too many anaerobes in your in your mouth and we can use something like, I don't know, 
a probiotic that can balance out your biome. And now you have fresh bread. <clears throat> and, and you see it here. Uh, this is just a, one example, one manufacturer, which I think works really, really great. So oral probiotics, think of these freeze-dried probiotics, right? <clears throat> these uh, harmless bacteria that get activated when you put it in your mouth and you chew it. And now they compete for the same nutrients that the harmful bacteria compete for. So now you're restoring balance, right? I don't want to kill bacteria, but if I can kind of modify the environment, excellent. Now I'm finding biology with biology, right? I'm trying to outsmart the system. <clears throat> and again, this is a, a, it's not a cookie cutter approach. Everybody's different. Uh, for example, when you're looking at um, teeth, some of them look great. Some of them have these white areas or, or um, darker areas. So um, you, may, uh, you may have grown up in a rural area where you had well water and it did have minerals like magnesium, even fluoride. So uh, fluoride can actually strengthen teeth uh, at, with low doses, but too much of anything like we heard before is a bad thing, it's toxicity. So this is actually called fluorosis where the, we had too much fluoride and it actually looks more brown, right? So what we can do is we can use a mineralization paste uh, that increases alkalinity, decreases sensitive teeth, it strengthens uh, your teeth and it can reverse cavities. So um, I showed you a picture before of a tiny little cavity that you would not want to go in there and drill it. You can actually remineralize it by using this MI paste. MI for minimally invasive is calcium phosphate. Um, it does not have fluoride and actually it goes, it bathes the tooth and, and it infuses it with mineral that really strengthens it and it can reverse these cavities. I don't know about you, but I'd rather remineralize 10 of my mini tiny little um, weak areas than have 10, 10 fillings, right? And we uh, heard about, um, you know, our healthcare system is, is broken, right? Um, they're waiting for bad things to happen and they're trying to patch things up. Well, I want to heal things and catch things super early. I'd rather reverse these, these teeth, these uh, tiny, tiny little beginnings of cavities than wait for it and say, oh, your insurance doesn't cover this. But if you have 10 cavities and we can do 10 fillings, your insurance will, will pay for it. Let's do it that way. That's not, that's not really a practical, efficient way to, to provide health care. You know, xylitol is another interesting thing. It's a naturally found sugar that cannot be metabolized by these harmful bacteria. Uh, so it's a wonderful thing. It actually produces more saliva. It stimulates your saliva production. Uh, and as you're chewing uh, the sugarless gum, you're pulling away the debris. Um, you've heard of the commercial, if you can't brush, chew. Well, this is um, definitely, definitely true. So I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about vitamins. Um, we definitely don't have enough time to talk about that, but I will talk to you about natural ways, for example, essential oils like peppermint or, or frankincense or um, <clears throat> eucalyptus oil, right? Uh, a lot of you have heard of oil pulling where you use coconut oil, like fractionated coconut oil, and you mix some of these antibacterial um, natural essential oils and they have anti-inflammatory properties. It's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. Uh, you can uh, basically do a, a do-it-yourself toothpaste where you can use uh, hydrogen peroxide, some some uh, coconut oil, some essential oils, a couple of drops go a long way. Put some baking soda in there, which is alkaline and also it's mildly abrasive, right? You may also wanna put some Himalayan um, salt, which I think is absolutely wonderful. And uh, now you have all the good things without any bad things, all natural stuff, uh, slightly abrasive, but guess what happens to the salt when you put it in your mouth? It melts, right? So it's not harmful to your enamel or, or any of your dental work. So I like these uh, bio-friendly, um, things. And I'm, I'm just giving you an appetizer today, right? I mean, I have so many things that I could share with you. We just don't have the time to do it. But I'll give an example of a biological treatment. You all have this amazing, phenomenal healing capacity, right? It's circulating through your blood right now, right as we speak. So if you have areas where you have slight bone defects, let's take a look over here. We have this little cleft, right? Uh, what we can do is we can take some blood, right? Draw some blood, spin it, with a special centrifuge. Now we take this platelet-rich fibrin. You've heard of platelet-rich plasma. They do like facials with it. And we're taking all these uh, goodies from your blood, right? The ones that are specific for healing and tissue repair, not the red blood cells that carry oxygen. That's for a different function, right? I want repair, I want regeneration. So now I can take that and focus that, that concentrated healing capacity, your own healing capacity and manipulate it, put it in an area where you need regeneration and wherever I need bone, I get bone. 
Wherever I need gum tissue, I get gum tissue. Wherever I need uh, connective tissue, I get connective tissue. I think that's absolutely fascinating. And again, it's not super, super high tech. It's more low tech, but it's more a biological approach. So I want to hit it from every different angle. Um, holistic, biological, high tech, and also in, in a very compassionate, um, conscientious way. Uh, let's shift gears for a quick moment. Uh, same theme, biomimetic uh, treatments, but advanced treatments such as orthotic appliances. Sometimes people do clench and uh, a simple appliance, a, a carefully crafted appliance will actually deprogram these muscles from clenching, right? So yeah, it's not just a piece of plastic that's gonna protect your teeth. It actually trains the, the brain and the muscles to neutralize these muscles so that actually it's therapeutic, not just like, we're not playing defense here, right? We're actually thinking ahead and, and doing something really good for you. Um, when the time comes for you to um, remove some of these mercury fillings, it has to be done a certain way. We have to prepare the body to detoxify, right? That's where I would work with Dr. Roberts and she'll kind of optimize things first before we take out these uh, uh, mercury fillings. You have to have a special barrier like you see here, um, I have to take them out in little chunks as opposed to making this plume of mercury. Uh, we use a special extra oil suction machine. We use our regular suction machine. We wear special um, equipment. Uh, you have to have a special nasal hood that has oxygen. And then we use some um, uh, chlorella and bentonite clay, activated charcoal. There's a protocol. So we enhance your chelating uh, ability and your detox ability. And you heard me talk about lasers and three-dimensional disinfection of, of root canal treatments. Uh, PIPS is uh, photo-induced uh, photoacoustic streaming. Uh, it's uh, literally light energy using with uh, uh, ozonated water to really give it a three-dimensional clean. Uh, but we also use lasers for gum treatments, right? Gum sculpting, if you have too, too much gum tissue, like excess gum tissue, um, we can use it for that. We can use it for periodontal um, uh, disease to uh, non-surgically treat this disease and try to regenerate it and sterilize these pockets around your gums and your teeth. Uh, sometimes we do biostimulation, which really enhances your immune response. Um, that works really, really great. Uh, so there's many different things that we can do. Uh, speaking of technologically advanced treatment, CAT CAM is computer-aided design, computer-aided milling. Uh, we stole this technology about 25 years ago from engineers that would make you know, car parts and things like that. So how cool would it be for us to use a special uh, scanner? Think of it as a, a camera, like a, a pen camera, video camera that scans your teeth. And instead of um, having uh, actual impression, this is like a digital impression where you, you can actually see your teeth this way. You electronically send it to the lab or you can mill it in-house within an hour and make custom uh, fillings or onlays or crowns. Uh, as I said, many times you can do it the same day or, or maybe in a couple of days. So it's a very quick, Turnaround, deadly accurate, super, super um, bio-friendly. And uh, again, it's just technology used at, the, at, it, at its best, at its very best. Uh, now sometimes we lose teeth and, and we, you know, we have baby teeth, we have adult teeth, and then we have implants, right? So dental implants can provide tooth replacements uh, so you can chew properly, so you can uh, have proper digestion, maintain your vertical dimension, um, you can speak properly, you can smile with confidence. Um, and, you know, it used to be a very, very invasive procedure. Nowadays, with uh, this scan that I was telling you about and the cone beam uh, 3D scan that we mentioned earlier, you can actually do the surgery virtually, right? Now, what does that mean? Do we do like a Zoom meeting and I treat you at your own house? No, not exactly. Uh, but I can actually do the surgery myself uh, on the computer, make a special guide, then you come in and in an hour, I can place either one or, or 10 implants um, without even you know, cutting gums or undoing anything. So think of it as open heart surgery versus laparoscopic. I prefer laparoscopic, right? And then you have minimal discomfort, if any, um, and you have very, very accurate uh, treatment. So I'd rather do all the planning ahead of time where you're not even in the, in the office and then just have a nice, quick, easy appointment when you're here. Um, a lot of you asked about um, straightening teeth in a natural way. So we know um, the old fashioned ways with brackets and wires, uh, but we do have clear aligner orthodontic therapy. Uh, Invisalign is one of them, sure smile is another, um, but you can literally have a nice, beautiful smile in less than, less than 10 months 
most of the cases, right? Some cases are a little bit more complex than others, um, but this is great because um, you wear it all the time. You take it out when you eat, you can eat anything you want. There's no restrictions, right? So um, in as little as six months, most patients have a, a nice, beautiful, straight smile, um, which I think is really great. And the last thing I want to finish up with is uh, phobic patients. You know, to me, dental phobia is a condition, right? And sometimes patients will say, oh, I'm a chicken, uh, I'm sorry. And, um, you know, my response to that is, please don't apologize for having a condition, you know? If you had diabetes, would you say, I'm sorry? You know, I'm sorry, I have high blood pressure. I'm sorry, doc. No, of course not. So it's a condition. Don't be embarrassed. Um, we treat it, right? So whether it's a mild apprehension or, or a complete phobia that has kept you out of a dentist for 15 years, there's, there's a, a way to treat you, right? So uh, the, low, the lowest level is aromatherapy. Uh, we have um, neck wraps and, and uh, warm blankets. We have a TV on the ceiling to help you coast through the treatment or wireless uh, noise canceling headphones. You can listen to some music if you like. Uh, sometimes we use sweet air, sometimes we do oral conscious sedation, where you take a pill and it really uh, takes, takes the edge off. And then the, the ultimate one, which is IV sedation, um, where I do gain uh, IV access and then uh, fully monitored as if you were in the hospital. Um, and we can literally take care of uh, decades of dental neglect through no fault of your own, right? Because of dental phobia, we can do it in one, one appointment. So you literally sleep through the treatment we take care of everything in one, in one visit. So in my eyes, uh, to summarize everything, oral optimization is a combination of all these things that you see here, modern oral care, customized, customized for each particular patient, right? Not, not everybody needs everything that I've just discussed, right? It, it's all about being minimally invasive. And if it mimics nature, it's good for us, right? Uh, an example would be probiotic. Uh, I love identifying and resolving oral infections and oral issues for that matter by using advanced diagnostics and early detection. One example, like I mentioned, was salivary analysis, where you can really kind of see the Sherlock Holmes and figure out exactly what that imbalance is. And it's, this is a strategy, right? Prevent or manage chronic conditions in the most natural, effective way possible. Uh, what I'd like to offer for, uh, all of you attendees today is uh, a limited offer where we can do a comprehensive oral examination. Um, roll the red carpet, pull out uh, all these toys. It's a $600 value for only $60, uh, limited to the first six uh, people who respond. Um, and, and basically we do a, co a customized oral optimization consultation where we can use all these techniques that I special uh, uh, mentioned today. If you go to the website, it's esihealthydentistry.com. You'll see a blue bar where you can click on that, and then you'll see a little window where you can populate your information, uh, click sign up, um, we'll, we'll respond to you. We have a list of all the attendees for today, so uh, we can get you in. And um, as an added value, we'll give you the family discount, 50% uh, courtesy towards any biologic like MI paste, that, that uh, alkaline paste that I mentioned to you, or oral probiotics. It's a wonderful way to naturally fight cavities and, and gum disease and uh, ensure that you have fresh breath, even whitened teeth. Um, there are some other things that I have available like the specially crafted GI probiotics. God forbid you need to be on an antibiotic. There's a special blend that I have found and I've searched many, many years. Uh, this thing is unbelievable. It will really protect all your good GI gut bacteria uh, while you're on a short uh, course of antibiotic treatment. And xylitol, like I mentioned before, which works really, really great. Uh, so again, my name is Jimmy Kilimitzoglu, um, and I work with Tom Patrick, who's also a naturopath, a brilliant guy, a very passionate, we're both very, very passionate about natural uh, healing ways, and we are in Smithtown. Um, again, the best way to get more information is the uh, website, which is esihealthydentistry.com. So at this point, I'll turn it back over to Alex. We'll take some questions. Yes, great work, everybody. Dr. Jimmy, amazing. Uh, Dr. Roberts, awesome. Uh, Yelena, Jose, you guys are, you're, you're becoming like stars here. Awesome, great, great, great work. And um, I wanted to say that, first of all, uh, for those of you guys who stuck around with us, which most of you did, I totally appreciate that. Um, I'm going to be giving away a couple of copies of this book, like I mentioned in the beginning. It's The Obesity Code by Dr. Jason Fung. It has over 10,000, closer to 15,000 five-star reviews on Amazon. 
Uh, I read the book a number of times and uh, it absolutely blows the uh, calories in, calories out paradigm out of the water. And I think one of the major contributing factors to a lot of the chronic disease that we're dealing with in the United States is uh, being overweight and obesity. Even 10 pounds overweight can, can significantly affect your optimal health and well-being. One of the things I'd like to offer you uh, with Dr. Roberts is a 45 minute consultation that we'll do together to really help you kind of uh, unravel whatever it is that you're dealing with and uh, find the most empowering way to address it. Uh, the usual fee for Dr. Roberts is um, $500 and we're gonna offer you that at no cost. So we're, we're gonna make it available as long as we, you know, uh, however many people we can accommodate. Uh, her time is, um, uh, you know, very hard to come by, but uh, I'll fight for it. I'll fight for you is what I'm trying to say. But um, I'll, I'll make a link available there. So if there are any questions you guys would like to begin with, then uh, please go ahead. Uh, you can either put them in the uh, question and answer or just put them in the chat box and um, just let us know who you're addressing it to. And we'll just hang around and chat for as long as you guys want us here. All right. If I may, um, I see a, a question from uh, Francesca uh, regarding growing enamel. Um, yeah. I didn't mention that. Uh, so we're currently working on uh, growing teeth, right? Uh, we're not there yet. We're probably about 50 years, five zero, 50 years out. Uh, so you, once the enamel is grown, you can't uh, regrow it, but you can repair it which I think is the next best thing, right? By flooding it with that mineral that I, that I mentioned to you. It also has to do with diet, right? What will break down enamel is acidic foods, right? I'm not suggesting you should totally change your diet, but um, acidic foods, be careful. There's a couple of different things that you could do, like uh, drink a lot of water uh, while you're eating acidic foods, or you can neutralize it by uh, chewing xylitol gum or having something more basic or alkaline, like maybe switch around with some baking soda right after. So um, there's definitely things that you can do. Excellent. Uh, let's see, we have a question here. Uh, Mariella wants to know, uh, I would love to have a dental checkup, but I have COVID-19 concerns. What would you recommend? Uh, Dr. Jimmy's office is like a spaceship. Everything is uh, super sanitized. Everybody's like super, uh, amazing. I, I've worked in his office over the last few months, and uh, it's, it's amazing how clean everything is. And it doesn't smell like a dental office. It smells like, I don't know, a flower shop, I think. Yeah, I kind of went overboard. You know, uh, uh, like Jose was saying, you know, you can have one unit that's responsible for 3,000 square feet. Um, well, for, I have one of those units for each room. And, and the room is maybe like, you know, 800 square, no, not even. It's like, uh, Two, two, three hundred square feet. So, um, you know, I have to work there too. It has to be safe for me too. It's ha it has to be safe for my uh, team and obviously the, my family of patients. So, uh, yeah, I, if you have, you know, one concern or, or 10 concerns about COVID, I have like a thousand concerns. So I'm probably my worst critic and it has to be safe, whether it's like staggering people and, and workflow and all those things. Uh, I'm definitely all for it. Uh, Brian has a question. I have uh, misaligned teeth and never had braces. How important is it to have teeth alignment? So um, everybody's different, right? Sometimes you may have misaligned teeth and if I analyze your bite, it may not be picture perfect, but it's a healthy bite. So not everybody needs tooth alignment. Um, and I'm very passionate and honest about that. Um, I only want you to go through necessary treatment. Um, now, obviously, some people will say, you know what, I don't like my alignment. I just want to change it because of aesthetics. That's a different story. Uh, but there are some uh, bites, so to speak, right, occlusion, we call it, that is unhealthy. And, um, you know, 10, 20, 30 years down the road, it can cause a lot of problems. So I'm not sure exactly where you would be. Um, like I said, everybody's different. Very great. Um, let's see. All right, well, while you guys come up with uh, questions, uh, I'd like to um, ask Dr. Roberts, 
First of all, um, I, I thought uh, your presentation was terrific. I love the uh, way you engage the people. It was so good. And um, I, I found it uh, very enlightening and inspirational. You know, the very fact that we can identify those two things, a lack of vitamin D and um, heavy metal toxicity like mercury, uh, that we can resolve probably 50% of chronic illnesses out there. And, uh, you know, from what I've learned so far, like I speak to a lot of people on a weekly basis, uh, when I ask them, uh, do you know your vitamin D level? Most people have no concept. Uh, if they do know, they know it's low. So, uh, you know, the, the time most of us will find out that our vitamin D has been low for the last couple of decades is when we're being diagnosed with some kind of a really ugly, unpleasant condition. So, um, you know, so I thought that was awesome. Uh, KT has a question. Uh, do you take insurance, which is my favorite question? That's great. And uh, I'm glad that you have insurance. And although we're not a uh, participating provider, you won't see us on a panel. Um, my front desk is really, really good about minimizing your out-of-pocket and maximizing your insurance benefit. So uh, they can work with your insurance to, to really, uh, like I said, I only want you to get the right treatment, only what you need, and I only want you to pay for what you need. So I'm really passionate about staying within, within the budget, but getting the best, best dental care that you, you can possibly get. Let me just say a word about uh, health insurance. Um, the system has been set up in such a way where, uh, like I said, I speak to a lot of people, the average person is spending $2,300 a month on their health insurance. Uh, I spoke with a friend of mine who's spending $33,000 a month on their health insurance, uh, $33,000 a year on their health insurance with a $2,000 per person deductible. So that's a lot of money over a lifetime that we're putting into a pot where it almost assures that we're going to develop some kind of a chronic illness because we are spending all of our money there and there are a lot of perverse incentives that are created. So like, for example, uh, if you go to a doctor, a uh, dentist that accepts insurance, I'm not saying they're like that, but human nature is what it is. Um, if the only way a doctor can access money from your health insurance is when you already have some kind of a chronic problem, so what would incentivize a doctor to want to heal your tooth like Dr. Jimmy was talking about? For that to be accomplished, you have to have a direct relationship with your doctor. Uh, with Dr. Roberts, for example, once you go to a medical doctor with your health insurance, uh, the only thing they're gonna do is identify early stages of your chronic illness and then manage it with medication for the rest of your life. Uh, with Dr. Roberts, what she wants to do is identify any deficiency, any toxicity, make sure your digestive system is working optimally. And when you do those three things, you can uh, not only avoid 90% of these uh, lifestyle conditions that we've been told are inevitable and incurable, but you can actually live at the peak level of health expression. And I don't know what you, if you remember what that feels like, to have really sharp thinking, lots of energy, great sleep, good sex, you know, really a good time. Enjoy life the way you were supposed to, the way you were meant to enjoy it. You know, so that's, that's my little uh, spiel on health insurance. I, I think it's the most um, anti-health program in, in, our, in our country today. Uh, Dr. K, I'm oh, sorry. sorry. I just want to jump in there and make a quick comment. Please. Um, you know, I always said to myself, I always said to myself and my patients, if I, if I did a good job, I would put myself out of a job, you know, and, um, and really that's what I aimed to do in a lot of ways. I was doing adjustments on patients and they'd come in with the same adjustment every week. And I eventually wound up creating, um, you know, a wellness program that helped them learn how to rebalance their body so they wouldn't have to come in getting the same adjustment every week. And we put together exercise programs and we put together memberships to help people attain that. Um, and I think that's really important. I wanna see healthcare move in that direction where we have wellness support systems instead of these sick care systems. Um, you know, and I see Rhoda, you, you had, uh, Rhoda had written one question here too that I just wanted to, to answer real quick, which is, um, you know, is it as simple as just taking vitamin D supplement or are there issues with absorption, et cetera? And, um, you know, that's, that is exactly why I set up these classes, not just the physical classes, but also I have, you know, like a, a seven week transformational program and um, a, a basically like a life, um, 
uh, lifestyle transformational program that helps you address those things. So yes, taking the supplement is the first step, but if there are absorption issues, if there is inflammation in the gut, if there's damage we've done over a lifetime, or if there's toxicity that we've accumulated, the body oftentimes is inflamed and exactly what you're suggesting, Rhoda, it's a, it's more difficult to absorb the vitamins or nutrients and be able to um, to heal the body as quickly. So there's a, a foundational curriculum that I created for that where you get the information and once you're educated, you have that for a lifetime and you know how to take care of your body forever. And then we can all just keep optimizing and optimizing and optimizing and really experiencing like what is the body's potential rather than like, can I just keep myself from getting sick? That's amazing. Thank you so much. I, I, that's exactly right. What is the body's potential? Because a lot of us, uh, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're an executive, if you're a business owner, if you're a mom, you know, you are like a race car, you know, and uh, vitamin D in my mind is like engine oil. When you're operating your car at those speeds with, with all, you know, all those hours that you're on the track, so to speak, you know, uh, if the oil is low a quart or two quarts or three quarts, and it's like that for a long time and you're driving yourself so hard, eventually you're going to blow a gasket. And when that happens, the road back is very, very difficult. What we're saying is let's make sure all your fluids are up where they're supposed to be. That's so much easier to maintain. It's so much less expensive to address than it is you know, to wait until you develop a chronic illness and then manage that illness with all of its complications, diabetes, cancer, heart disease. You know, uh, in the United States right now, uh, 650,000 people per year die from heart, heart disease. I mean, that's a travesty. 600,000 die from cancer. And then a few hundred thousand more die from the treatment of all of that stuff, the iatrogenic injury from, uh, from medicine, the hospitals and all, all those systems. So... You know, I think we would be much more intelligent in our uh, success in life if we were to take control of our health and well-being and take it away from all these uh, uh, bureaucracies that are out there profiting from our sickness and disease. Uh, <clears throat> Angelica has a great question uh, for Dr. Kilimanjaglu. Uh, what if we don't live in New York, Los Angeles? Wow. Um, is there a way to have a virtual diagnosis? I understand it would be nearly uh, as complete, but uh, wondering if it could be a possibility. Come to New York, you know. Uh, the weather's great here, like around May. <laughs> right now, not so good, but May, it's almost like California. <laughs> yeah, and, and to piggyback on that, uh, we can certainly have a, a talk, we can certainly have a consultation, but uh, not a complete um, examination. Yeah. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Jimmy has people traveling from around the country, and most of the doctors in New York who are functional medicine doctors, uh, like Dr. Roberts, uh, they not only send their patients to Dr. Jimmy, but they actually go see Dr. Jimmy uh, himself, uh, themselves. And, um, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a reason for that. He's one of a handful of doctors who practice this way and has the technology to the level that he has. Um, so... So there it is. Anyone else? Any other questions that we can address while we're here? Um, a question from Carolyn up above, a little higher there, Alex. Well, I see one from uh, KT here. When I click on a link for a consultation, it says it isn't a secure connection. It might be fraud. I don't know why that is. Dr. Jimmy, do you, can you check and see if it works? Uh, Dr. Jimmy, is it possible for you to do teeth alignment for somebody who has one or more missing teeth that are due to fake replacements or flippers? Flippers? Make sure, I want to make sure I understand that. Yes, yes, absolutely. So if you have one or more missing teeth, we can still do tooth alignment. Absolutely. Okay. Well, that's great. So... Um, if there are no, no more questions, I'm going to start wrapping it up. Anybody else? Uh, final question that you really want to ask, but you're, you're a little bit uncomfortable in expressing yourself in public. I want you to find the courage, deepen your soul, take the opportunity to live at that higher level of freedom and power. 
and ask your question. There's a few more in the actual chat, Alex. Wait, I'm sorry, chat? Where am I? There's a Q&A. There's a few people that are finding that courage within themselves. Uh, what, in the question and answer or, or the- no, uh, in the chat, in the actual chat to the panelists. There's a, there's a question for Dr. K from Carolyn. It says, Dr. K, my husband has, has to get four implants. All the extractions have been done over a period of time. He has to wait until April to get a bone scan and then schedule the implants. How would you be able to help him? No, this is good because the hard part is done and it seems like he's, he's ready for the next phase. Um, yeah, we would start with a, a quick consultation and then go over uh, what the best treatment plan would be for, for him. But yeah, this, this is uh, the type of patient that I normally work with and I can certainly help them. Awesome. Uh, Donna wants to know, can you tell me your schedule in March, Dr. Jimmy? I never know my schedule, but- uh, I would I'll tell you what it is, it's, it's very busy. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, would love, I would love to meet you, and uh, I'm sure my, my team can find time so we can uh, get together, absolutely. Awesome. Um, <laughs> no, all right. Well, great. I, I think you guys did really good today. Uh, great questions. Thank you, everybody. So, Dr. Jimmy, pick a name, and um, out of all the questions that were asked, I'm going to give away a copy of this life-transforming book. Well, I would say Carolyn. Carolyn, great choice. Carolyn Vallela. Va 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 okay, and Danielle, pick somebody. Danielle, you're muted. I would say Angelica. And Jose, why don't you pick somebody? I would say uh, Rhoda. You guys are so good, thank you. All right, <laughs> I, I put my email there, uh, Rhoda, where, what's her last name? Wooly, W-O-L-L-E. Got it. You guys have been a great crowd. I mean, this is uh, one of the best uh, attendees that we've had, right? We, we have an amazing group today, really. And uh, from San Francisco, I'm not sure how you found us. I mean, we were kind of targeting uh, mostly Suffolk County at this point, but I'm happy you did it. I'm happy you made it. Um, so um, as we start wrapping it up a little bit, I, I put my email there. So those of you who want a copy, just send me your mailing address and I'll get a copy to you uh, out immediately. And uh, um, as we start wrapping it up, I'll uh, have uh, uh, Jose, uh, Dr. Roberts, and Dr. Jimmy just say the last couple of words here. Uh, Jose, you wanna, you wanna go first? Sounds good, sounds good. Thank you very much. Well, uh, everyone, thank you for joining us tonight. It was a great, great presentation from all of you. Dr. K, great job as usual. Thank you. I always learn something from you as well. <laughs> good to see you, my friend. Yes, that's awesome. Very good. Very good. Um, so, yes, I just wanted to also say that uh, we also I want to offer a 15% discount on whole house configurations, meaning when you get a whole house unit and also the drinking system, just like the picture that I showed before, it shows a little house with everything in it. That's what normally is a recommendation anyway, because you don't want to depend on just the whole house system. And in terms of the point of use in the kitchen, you know, you're forgetting about the skin and everything else. So you want to make sure you take care of the whole family by doing that. Um, and, you know, we have the prices all set already. So 15% discount on that because as long as you mention, um, you know, um, the show organization, S-C-H-O. Have a good one, guys. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you, Jose. Uh, Dr. Roberts? Yes, thank you. Alex, again, thank you for bringing everybody together. This is it's so wonderful. I mean, I, I love doing things in person, but just to be able to do this with everybody and help people reach people and connect is just so great. So thank you for doing that. Um, everyone, thank you for participating. Thank you for your questions. I hope it was informative. I hope it was helpful. Um, I'm going to have a new website launching soon. Dr. Danielle Roberts, you'll be able to get more information there. And um, my wellness courses, the, uh, the transformational seven week program and the ongoing courses, I have never done virtually, but we are converting them. Um, so they, they used to all be live and just fabulous, but we're figuring out ways to work them virtual. So we'll be opening them um, 
some point soon, probably April. So if you guys are interested in those, go ahead and uh, you can find me on on the website, or um, we'll get you we'll get you my information too if you need it. Just contact Alex. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Roberts. Uh, Dr. Demi. Yeah, um, my message uh, would be: don't underestimate your healing potential because you have it. And um, I want you to uh, walk away from this uh, webinar with hope. Hope that if there's a problem that you have, there's got to be a solution. And um, you've already taken the first step. I mean, this is a captive audience. You guys take responsibility for your health. I love working with people like you uh, because you care and you want to do something about it. Um, you want to seek for that information. You're on a quest to become uh, the healthiest version of you that you can possibly get. So remember, you have that potential, that healing potential, and there's always, always hope. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Jimmy. Uh, I just want to say it was really our goal here to show you the matrix. I hope it was clear how um, how uh, pervasive it is and how um, difficult it is to become to get out of it. It's very easy to get in, but it's very difficult to get out of it. So I hope you saw that. You know, my message is that a lot of times people look at the world and they see the beautiful mountains, the powerful ocean, uh, the uh, magnificent field of flowers, and they say, you know, that's amazing. But they look in the mirror and sometimes they say, you know, this is an imperfection because it's got all these problems and um, all these health issues. But I just want to tell you that to me, at least, you are the most beautiful, powerful, magnificent creation on this planet. And if you keep searching, if you keep looking, you will eventually find the answer that you're searching for. It's been truly an honor for all of us to uh, spend this time with you. We wish you incredible health and um, God willing, a fantastic new year. Thank you, everyone. God bless and good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Yeah.